let's say you go back in time. You know, you, you, you just get out of the DeLorean, you see a young, you see that, that Jerry McCambridge working at the Radio Shack, uh, you know, splitting time between that and, and, and the Magic Act. What do you tell young Jerry McCambridge right now? What is the one thing, the one piece of advice? Uh, you want to follow your dream, uh, but you want to do it very sensibly and logically, you know, and you also want to be honest with yourself. One thing people don't like to do, you know, you, you get so wrapped up in something, either it be a trick or a routine, and you think it's great, and listen to people on the outside. Videotape it and watch it and, and see, wow, it kind of doesn't look like, it, it doesn't look on the screen like it does in my head. Uh, listen to people, ask people for advice, people that you actually trust and encourage them to tell you the truth and not just blow sunshine up your tuchus. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, really work at your goal. Goals are attainable within a certain guideline. If you can't sing, don't set up a goal to be an opera star. It's just not going to happen. But if you're pretty good at, at performing and doing magic and at your craft and you look good, uh, and, and you photograph well and you want to do TV, then your goals are attainable, you know, go for them. But go for them in a very smart way. Don't just go crazy and go for it and then you crash and you burn. You know, a lot of people love to say, oh, look at McCambridge. He, you know, he lucked out getting a network TV show. Yeah. Well, I have letters dating back 15 years from NBC rejecting my offers for TV shows. Uh, so for me to hit with one, I probably had 99 ideas and proposals and pitches rejected. And you need to be able to wait out that storm, you know, financially and everything. So it's good to go for a goal and, and just keep going. And every time something gets in your way, steer around it. That's cool. But at the same time, you know, have a, a realistic view on the world and what it's going to take to survive in the world. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the whole you know, 99 failures to, to the one success, because obviously in the showbiz mentality, you don't want to be the guy who's been trying forever, but that's you know, the, the reality about how things actually happen, the whole like, you know, overnight success story 10 years in the making. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. is, is that you know, almost uh, damaging to, to a young performer to, to you know, present that, uh, you know, the illusion that you want to sell to the public that you are this, you know, this ball of fire that came out of nowhere and has taken the world by storm. But uh, you know, for, for the young magician, I mean, would you like to kind of highlight that? Hey, listen, everybody's gone through these pitch and rejection process. Everybody's had somebody completely stomp on their dream a few times. Uh, you, you just got to keep going and put your head down. You know, the, depending on what you decide to do for a living, there's always rejection. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want nothing to do with show business and you want to be an accountant. <laughs> After you get out of school, you're going to interviews and you will get rejected by some firms before you actually get picked up by one. You know, you have to find the right fit for you and who you're going to be working for or what you're going to be doing. And the same thing occurs in show business, but in a more drastic way because, you know, a lot of times the casting agents or the producers or whatever have a very clear cut decision in mind as to what they want. We want a magician who can you know, produce doves, who's blonde, who's over six foot two. <laughs> they, they get really specific where if you're an accountant, they go, oh, you graduated top of your class. Come on in, do, you know, people's taxes. So if you're going into show business, you best be prepared for rejection or you're in the wrong industry because it is going to happen. Nobody's going to go from a magic kit to, you know, the Charvet School of Magic to the Tannins Magic Cam straight to television. It doesn't happen that way. And, you know, I, I've heard of Blaine pitching his show, and I knew Chris was pitching his show, and that's, that's the way the industry works. You have to find the right fit, and there are other people who make the decision. So where you think, oh, I'd be great on this network, you're going in to see one person, and if that person says no, you know, either you got to find other people in that network to go after, or you got to go after other networks, and just be prepared because a lot of times it's not personal. They're not looking at you going, oh, I don't like the color of your eyes. We don't want you on our network. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's, these are, the, these are the demographics that we hit. This is the type of show that we hit. You know, for me to take my show, The Mentalist, and to pitch it to the Travel Channel or the Discovery Channel would have been totally stupid because that's not what <laughs> they're looking for. You know, you go after your, your correct market and, uh, and rejection is part of it and you have to get used to it. Uh, and not take it personal, especially if you know what you're doing is good. I know my stuff is good, but there's some people that just don't like it, and I'm okay with that.
Well, yeah, and, and in terms of the research part, that is really, especially now that there's such a wide and varied TV landscape, you've got to know going in where your stuff is going to fit. I mean, it's almost like now you have to be a, a, a television, at least, uh, you know, watcher. I mean, you have, you have to subscribe to the trades. you got to know what show, what kind of pitches they're accepting to even have a shot at getting on one of these networks, right? If, if you go to school and you're a licensed plumber, you're not walking into an advertising agency saying, hire me. You know, <laughs> if you're an accountant, you're not going to Carvel and saying, hire me. Yeah. You know, you, you, you target the right place for what you're trained for. And it's the same with us. And, and if it's television and, you know, these the people that make the decisions see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of other people just like you. Yeah. And there has to be a reason that you are different. Now, I have a lot of friends out here in the uh, casino business who do the hiring, and they're the entertainment directors. And I go into their office to visit them, and on their desk, they have stacks and stacks of videos and tapes and audition kits and folders. And, you know, it's sometimes you won't get picked up or, or, or selected for something because they didn't even get around to you at the time. Or, or they just look and go, a magician? Let's stick that in the magician pile. We're kind of not looking for those at this point in time. And, you know, uh, a lot of things also has to do with the timing. You may be a great magician uh, going after a great network. And if that network just had a failure or a show that didn't do well or another magic show that did really bad in the ratings recently, a lot of times the networks will say, you know, we're taking a little break from magic at this point in time. And, you know, your timing is just off. Timing is, is a big part of it and, and hitting the right people at the right time. And, uh, you know, you, you, you really have to sit down and figure out how you're going to do it uh, and get people on your side like agents or managers to help you because it's their business. It's your business to know how to make a coin disappear mm -hmm. or a dove appear. Yeah. But it's their business to figure out how to get you on TV or, or, you know, how to get you in front of the right people. Indeed. Wise words from a man that has certainly been there before. We would like to thank Jerry McCambridge for helping us out and uh, doing the iTrix interview. Thank you very, very much, Jerry. My pleasure. Anybody who wants any advice, just drop me an email. Uh, there's a link on mentalist.com. I love to mentor people all the time and help you out. Of course. Of course, you can see Jerry at the Hooters Hotel and Casino six days a week, or as he mentioned, mentalist.com.